Welcome to Finite Element Methods. I'll be covering the second higher order quadrilateral isoparametric element formulation today. So very powerful idea. Now I'm gonna have a quadrilateral, but this quadrilateral has midpoints. And so that's great. One, two, three, four will get mapped into this square. One, two, three, four. These curved edges will also get mapped into straight edges and so forth. You can see here, we took a curved edge and mapped it into straight edge. Very, very amazing idea. We'll use an eight term in the polynomial approximation. So why I'm using eight, because I have eight nodes. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I wanna be able to use the middle ones here because if I choose this or that, it will become biased. And I won't develop the shape functions um, by hand because we already showed you how to do that. But these are the shape functions you will get if you were to follow the same process we had before. These shape functions are the same, um, similar to the ones that we have derived um, for bilinear quadrilateral element, but now I have additional terms. And you will see here that this works really well. We can check it. For example, this node, I have minus one, minus one. So that gives me four and that gives me one. So four divided by four is one and that's perfect. You can check that this is zero at this node, this node, this node. You will also see that this is zero also at middle nodes. So uh, the Kronecker Delta property applies where the shape function is one at this node, zero at, at all the other nodes. And I can then say the same thing about the, the, each of these shape functions. And if I add them up, I'll get one. Very powerful idea. So N bold are my trial functions, my basis functions in the weak form Galerging. There's another element called a Q9 element. So this is called a Q8 element because it has eight nodes. There's a Q9 nine element that has this middle node there. And to achieve that, you select this extra uh, term. You can't select any of these other ones because it becomes biased. You can actually derive what those shape functions look like by looking at the 1D shape functions for quadrilateral elements and multiplying by each other. I'll show you. So you will get all these different combinations. These, all these are the shape functions. You can derive the way we did it before or uh, just simply take this, 1D shape functions for quadrilateral elements and then formulate it by multiplying like that all the different combinations. The very last one is called the bubble function. And the reason is because it can actually simulate, if you look at here, that shape function is one here, but zero everywhere else. So it looks like a bu bubble, the shape of that function when you plot it. And the bubble um, element or the quad Q9 with a bubble function are, gives you these are the shape functions for that. Again, adds up to one. This one is, let's look at shape function, this shape function. This shape function, I believe, is this one in the middle. That C and eta is zero. Four divided by four is one. You can see it's one. And then if you plug in everything, anyone around, any, anything around here, that'll give you zero. So that shows that this works out really well. Add them up, you get one. Very, very similar idea, but now I have nine shape functions. So this, there's nine of this all the way to the to the right, right? Now the integrals go from minus one to one because it's a square, not a triangle. And I have to calculate J bold, which is the determinant. This is a two by two. Very similar procedure nothing more to do is the shape function is only the only thing that changes uh the comparison of q8 and q9 as a parametric elements lose accuracy when distorted from a rectangular shape the q9 element has advantages over q8 is less sensitive to losing accuracy from isoparametric mapping from a non-rectangular shape it handles curved sides with good accuracy 
handles nodes away from the mid-side nodes with good accuracy, and the bending behavior is improved. Also, the mass lumping will result in positive nodal masses, which is not the case for Q8. So there's some great advantages of Q9 over Q8 elements. With that said, I thank you again for listening to this lecture. And then I'll be stepping in the very next lecture, which is an example of how to apply this. Thank you again and have a great day.